Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look and see how much heat the Sun deposits on the surface of Mercury at the various locations in its orbit and let's compare that to what we receive on the Earth. Now on the Earth, being an average distance away from the Sun of one astronomical unit, the intensity is around 1366 watts per square meter depending upon which data set you used from which satellite. It's been as high as 1367, it's been as low as 1361, again it depends upon which satellite you use. There's also some differences associated with the fact that the Earth's orbit is not a circle, it's an ellipse, and therefore that of helium, when we're farther away, it drops to about 1321 watts per square meter, and when we're closer to perihelion, it increases to about 1413 watts per square meter. It depends upon where the Earth is in its orbit. Now let's go to Mercury. Now for Mercury, for Mercury, the distance to the Sun varies between 4.667 astronomical units and 0.3075 astronomical units. At this point, Mercury is less than one-third the average distance between the Sun and the Earth. Also realizing that the intensity of the sunlight is inversely proportional to the surface area over which the sunlight distributes itself, which means it's inversely proportional to the distance between the Sun and the planet. So, not only is the planet much closer to the Sun, the intensity depends upon 1 over the distance squared, which makes a big difference. So, at F helion, when Mercury is less than half the distance between the Earth and the Sun, the intensity is more than four times as high, and so the heat deposit on the surface is 6,272 watts per square meter, with no atmosphere to hold any of it back, like on the Earth. And at perihelion, when the distance is less than one-third of an astronomical unit, then you can see the sunlight intensity increases to over 14,000 watts per square meter. Every square meter of the surface of Mercury receives as much heat as what would be deposited by 10 space heaters. Think about those, 10, those electrical space heaters that you plug in, you set it to the highest setting, they typically give you heat of about 1,500 watts. Well, imagine you have 10 of those for every square meter of surface. That would be one of those for every square foot of surface of the surface of Mercury. No wonder it's as hot. Can you imagine sitting in a room with about 100 of those space heaters pointed at you? Well, that's kind of what it would be like to be on the surface of Mercury. So, because the relationship of the intensity to the inverse distance squared, that's what makes it an enormous, enormous amount of heat. Now, compare that to what you'd see at Pluto. Now, Pluto, having an average distance from the Sun of 40 astronomical units, there what you would find is that the power deposited, the amount of heat deposited, the intensity of sunlight on Pluto is about one watt per square meter. So notice the difference between what Pluto receives versus what Mercury receives. No wonder it's so cold at Pluto. And that's what it's like to be on Mercury.